Alrighty guys and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing an educational informative clown game on Hattonfield. Now this map isn't going to be very beneficial for me. I'm going to be moving around at 115% moving speed with my bottles obviously putting a hinder penalty on a survivor for 15% for 2 seconds after they leave the smoke. It's going to put me in a really uncomfortable situation. However, I do have a really strong build providing everything stays above float. Now we can see we're using a heartbeat to check for our tap over here. Now I'm not going to aim at him. I'm going to aim really high. If you aim a bottle really high, you're going to get all the way around the loop. I'm going to do that one there too. That way he can't make a play for it. We're going to take an M1 in his back. A lot of people don't realize, I'll show you later on in the trial, but the clown's smoke is based on where the bottle landed. He went right, we're going to put that past. Unfortunately, I missed the wall I was aiming for. And he's going to be waiting at the pallet. We're going to punish him for it. We know there's another gamer here. We're going to quickly see if we can see the gamer. There's one scratch right there. I'm going to use the bottle to slow it down. That's Tinker already. That tells me there's two people on that generator. A generator takes 80 seconds to do yourself. Based on how quickly that generator is done, I know two people spawned together on the other end of the map because the game hasn't been started for more than 80 seconds. Therefore, I've got two people over there and I have one player over here. Very bad. I'm not going to be able to make that and stop that generator at all. We're going to sidestep in. We're looking for any form of crow despawn or scratch mark indicator. There should be crows down here. There's no crows nor scratch. Therefore, she went all the way around the outside. So I'm going to cut through and I'm going to fang it back around the outside and try and cut her off. See how that goes. So we got two down there. That's fine. Let's see if we got any indicator of her coming around. So she should be over here where I'm running to now. She could play this house if she really wants to. Let's sidestep back through. I'm going to play towards the street where these two guys are probably going to be coming running in. I don't see anything. It's unfortunate. We're well out of 32 meters. I'm going to cycle back around only based on the fact I've lost the generator over there and we know that there is a Megan over here somewhere. That tells me that somebody spawned apart, actually, believe it or not, and they did that generator both cycling through a toolbox. I should be able to intersect this in time with Tinkerer, which is good, and I have Ruin Regression too. Remember, Tinkerer does hide my light. Let's walk right up behind and go for the grab. We're very unfortunate we didn't get the grab. I think she went up the staircase. She did not go up the stairs. We're going to go out and through. It looks like she's camped. She didn't camp the pallet. She kept running. That's good. We're getting regression at 0.6% per second. And that's going to put us in a much better spot. If she turns in, we get the bottle right there. Unfortunately, we, we still got it. Remember, it does go through buildings too. She has to give me this god pallet straight away. She's camping the pallet too, which is fine. It's an M1 in her back. A little bit of a cheeky moonwalk. Let's pick her up. Everybody's full health. No obsession in the game. Therefore, I don't have to respect the size of strike. If you would like an M1 in the back, darling, I'm more than happy to give you one on the house. Looks like that is a negative in the M1 in the back. But we know we got progression on a generator through the what we can see here that's a totem being broken if i get direct impact with a bottle it will stop the animation from happening i'm very far away and it looks like i cannot get direct impact where it is let's go for it anyways there it is let's see if we get it we got it so it stops her from doing what she's doing the same principle applies towards a hook save it's a if the survivor is going for a hook save and you're too far away direct impact will stop them from doing what they're currently doing the good news is the other girl went inside Michael Myers' house, meaning one person is MIA in Maya. We've got a hit on that one over there, and one is on the hook. Therefore, we could be losing one generator. Tops, while this guy's getting saved, we're going to go right over the building with that. We're looking over there. Any form of indicator? we got nothing. Looks like nobody's here just yet. Looking at any scratch mark, we're going to cycle back through, go back towards our generator. The girl on the platform upstairs should have been looking at a drop down. I didn't see anything then. That's fine. We're going to go to Michael Myers' house and play off what is currently happening inside there. we still got regression on that over there. That guy is going to be getting saved, and we know that this girl is up here, and she's going to be taking the side window with an M1 in the back. Nice and easy. I'm going to go back down the staircase, check to the right, see where she left with her scratch marks. I can hear her crying, hide my light, twist around, go for a bottle, slowing her 15%, go for another bottle, waiting for the dead hard. No dead hard, no worries. Down she goes, scratches to my right. Two players accounted for, player got saved. Three players accounted for, one person mile. Let's pick her up, take her to the street. Any form of indicator, got regression on that generator down there. So he was working there. That generator's still regressing. That one upstairs is too. Hooking them in the street because I want them saved sooner rather than later. I got time to fill my bottles because these guys are currently busy scattering around or possibly breaking a totem. There's our indicator of exactly where we need to go. So let's apply that pressure over there. I'm going to take an assumption this is Detective Tap because I saw him here at the start of the game. Survivors generally are like B. Scratches to the right as well. Two players accounted for. Tap. Where'd you go, bud? M1 in the back. Somebody upstairs. Three players accounted for, including that scratch mark. Four, including the guy on the hook. Making an executive decision to down tap. Gonna aim way in front so he doesn't take this loop. Hide my light. Twist this for the last second. Oh, he actually played the house. Well done. We know there's somebody in Mize's house. Good side vault for him. Puts me in a really awkward situation. He's running to Mize's house. Puts me in a much better situation. Slow him down. He's off the gen now, whoever was upstairs. It's a very bad loop for you, my friend. Should easily be able to catch this. One more bottle for the road. Dead Hards has only played for the pallet, but it looks like he's out of position. M1 in the back. Players upstairs, nowhere near done. Tinker is giving me that indicator. Hook him to the right, so they have to funnel through the map. Tinker has activated. I'm going to hook him here. I still think he's by himself, and he's injured upstairs. He missed the skill check. Tinker doesn't give you double notifications. Let's go up. Two players. 
M1 in the back. He's going to drop. He's going to go for the save. I could take this one to the basement if I think it was appropriate right now. I do not want to go to the basement. I want this man saved or this lady saved sooner rather than later. I'm going to hook him out here on this exact same hook this guy's about to get saved from. It's good for us. One person MIA unaccounted for on full health could be activating Tinkerer. You point around here. I'll take this one rather. Tinkerer activating. I'm too far away to be able to stop that. That's fine. I'll apply pressure here when I need to. Deadheart is your only play beautiful. Can I see the Deadheart please? Negative. Down she goes. That guy gets saved. They run both back upstairs to try and apply pressure towards that generator. I lose one, giving me three generators left. I take this one to the street. Get her on the hook sooner rather than later. That other guy healed himself. Pretty sure we're going to lose Ruin. Uh, not Ruin, sorry. We're going to lose that generator that other person was on through Tinkerer. There it is. That guy's getting saved. She's on her hook. We'll take a hit for whoever's closest. Doesn't matter. They're running together. That's good for us. That girl completed her gen, so she's probably feeling obligated to come through the map and apply pressure to help. Tap just disappeared. Did he go in that corner? Yes, he did. I didn't even physically see him. I only saw one person running. We're going to cut through the center. There's our indicator. The other guy coming in, feeling like he needs to assist the team. See it coming. Don't have any bottles to interrupt this BT. What I do have is time to funnel her away. Looks like she's not looking for the trade. Only person on full health, therefore the most ambitious player. Going to go around it. It's fine. Entering chase, gonna take information through the street and make a play depending on what we see. M1 in the back, I didn't see anything in the street. I'm gonna let go of chase right now. Doesn't benefit me. She's running the direction I wanted to go. I'll commit to the chase. Somebody has been healed. Last second save inbound. Cutting through the board. Making sure it's a trade. Looks like we're a little late on this last second save because we decided to greed and heal. I believe that's on Detective Tap. That player is eliminated. And now we have time to aggress the middle of the street. Everything is gone. Break the pallet. Totems are okay. Scratches in front of me leading to the right hand side. On top of the totem. Detective Tap, you have my undivided attention. You are still injured, so you are not the one that I thought you were. Let's slow him down 15%. Have a look at the other totem. Oh, damn. That's unlucky. Can't protect them both. I feel that was a bit generous. I was pretty far away from that. We're losing one totem. With a bit of luck, it won't be Hex Undying. Bottle on the right. Medium vault on the window if he tries it. In the locker. Get the grab. That was Hex Undying we lost. Pretty unlucky. This man knows too much of my totem. Hook him at the back so I can break the pallet and funnel through the map and reload my bottles in the center of the board so I can uh, respond appropriately to Tinkerer. I also know that only one person could be working on a generator right now. And it looks like I've eliminated two players on Hattonfield. So now we're feeling pretty comfortable. Unfortunately, they know where this totem is as well, but that is also okay because I have Tinkerer and I have Surveillance, which is going to be my end game clutch. All right, now we know we originally forced a lady off this generator. It was a cade at the beginning of the game in the corner. Like I said, survivors like to come back to where they originally were. So I'm going to cycle down here while looking over my shoulder to see if somebody comes through the street. The generator hasn't even been touched in the slightest. We're going to check on this one over here too. Remember, each piston represents approximately 22% of completed generators. 15 seconds on a crow despawn. I know somebody was down here 15 seconds ago. Now the question is where. I'm aiming high with my bottles. That way I get a cloud effect. Funneling all the way around. They could have left in that time. We're going to put one there too. Looks like a negative on anyone being here, so they left. No scratch marks. I thought they might have possibly stayed. Let's funnel through the center of the board and see what is happening. Gonna check on our totem once. Take an M1 if somebody breaks it, and then split pressure elsewhere across the board. Nobody on the totem. Coming right through here. I can't hear this generator, but I'll still do a one over. Looks like we're okay. Michael Myers' house is an option, but I can really stand still right now because Tinkerer hasn't activated. I'm in a pretty solid spot. On Hattonfield, I only have to deal with one platform gen, two including the downstairs one, and somebody was over here and they managed to avoid me. Direct impact with the bottle, M1, hinders her sprint burst, we'll break the pallet, we don't want to catch her, we just want to keep her injured. Reload the bottles. That's the pressure I needed. That's good. And now Chase has been exited, she can't heal herself, I didn't hear her, I can hear her cry still I think. Yep, she's around there somewhere. I'll pretend I don't know where she is. So now I know she doesn't have Iron Will. I'll use it against her later on in the trial. Other person is avoiding me very well. I'm going to go upstairs for a field of view advantage. Scratch marks in front of me, leading to the left. That was probably by the other gamer going back towards her generator. Generator is no longer glowing white, but it never glue yellow in between, so it's 100% regressed. It's wet up there, so I slipped off the edge. I didn't mean to drop. All right. Looks like a negative on this generator as well. Let's go right through the center after we check on this bad boy one more time. It's white again. If I see an injured gamer, I'm going to let it happen. So my real play right now is to let her complete that generator, then the hatch will spawn and play off the exit gates because the other guy is avoiding me like the plague. 
he's probably on a side of the map with the generators completed, which is clever for him to be. At the same time, we do have two dead targets. I feel those scratch mark, that scratch mark right there is too far for it to be Megan. Not Megan, sorry, Kate. I feel Megan wouldn't have ran this far away when I let go of that chase. I think she's here. Do I know where she is? No. I'm gonna aim high with my bottle again. We saw one scratch and it faded. It's unfortunate. I don't see any crows on the tables down here. Crows always spawn on these tables. No crows on the bench either. No crows on the further down bench. That means Kate's back on this generator. Kate? No, somebody's here. Somebody was here. These crows will be spawning back in. I don't know where they are exactly, but we know. Let's move through the center. We do have our ruin for our regression. We have our tinkerer. We're going to let whoever avoided us there continue to avoid us. We're going to check on this house by listening. There you go. Nearly done, but not close enough. Do I see blood? I do not see blood. I do not see scratches going up the staircase. Therefore, it was impossible she came up. She went down underneath. If I don't see any form of indicator behind any of these counters, she, I didn't hear the window either. She's probably in that locker. If she's not in the locker, she slow vaulted that window and I fell for a trap. Good play by her. Where would you have went if you slow vaulted the window, darling? You wouldn't have went. There she is there. It's another K. Surprise that missed. Let's aim in front of her, in front of the tree. Good movement, good sidestep. I don't have to land the bottle. The bottle will help though. There we go, M1, slow it down a bit. Generator's glowing white underneath me. That tells me where the other player is. I'm going to run so far away that that generator... There you go. That's information. That's my winning in grace right there. Now, look how unsafe this loop is with the tree. Very fast moonwalk. See how she responds. Oh, she waited in a really good spot. All right, here's the play. She has iron will. Look at this tree. Best tree in Dead by Daylight. You can't play that pallet unless you stun the killer, and I know exactly where the final gamer is. I have monitored... Well, I have the equivalent of no heartbeat. Looks like he's not ready for it. Tinkerer being MVP right now. No light. M1 in the back. Down she goes. <laughs> Looking at who's been on the ground for longest. This one hasn't been on the ground at all. So I'll hook this one first. Less likely Unbreakable is going to be an issue. We're going to hook her at the back. I'm going to try and go right through and get to the other guy as quickly as possible. Because he could possibly Unbreakable and make a play for the, uh, the exit as well. If he is using Unbreakable, it means he hasn't moved. And he's right in between the pallet right now recovering. If he's moved, then I doubt he has Unbreakable. Listening for a cry. Oh, there we go. We hear the cry. Looks like she crawled a little bit, but not far enough. And we're going to be able to pick her up and secure a hook. And that's going to be an educational, informative rank one clown game with no add-ons on Hattonfield, showing you just some of the hardcore clown tricks. Now, I do want to show you a little trick with the bottle with the clown as well. You'll notice in that trial, I aimed high with my bottle. Let me show you the difference between two bottles, for example. I'm going to aim this bottle straight. For example, it's going to show you a cloud of smoke. It's pretty small. It's confined. It's more... Dense. Now I'm going to show you a high bottle. A high bottle will cover a much larger area of effect, but there's going to be puddles in between. Well, that was lucky. There's, there's going to be puddles in between, showing you guys how powerful a clown can actually be if you understand where to place your bottles based on what jungle gym you are. Anyways, guys, that's going to be an educational informative rank one clown game. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that subscribe button for more educational informative DVD killer content and survivor content. I do play both sides. If you guys want to catch the live streams, I do play DVD over at Twitch. It'd be great to have you guys in there. Anyways, guys, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the fog in the next video. Have a good one.